All right, so, um, yeah, I have had uh, instances where I've had several um, requirements due at the same time, and uh, what I like to do is look at all those requirements and um, kind, of, kind of identify which ones um, are going to be more complex, if there are any of them that are going to require some more lead time than the other ones. Uh, also look at any of them that might have uh, requirements that are, or require interaction from people outside of organizations. You know, do I have to send this to somebody else first and then get it back uh, before it go forward? Um, look at which ones are, are again, uh, look at complexity uh, to try to figure out uh, if any of them are really easy uh, and simple. We can get those off our plate really quick uh, or which ones are going to take more time and resources. So uh, once I've kind of looked at that, um, what I'll do is I'll try to identify: Are there any of those requirements that I can that are good that I could accelerate uh, based off of putting some more man hours in, or getting some more manpower, getting some more help? You know, would, would those accelerate those? Right? Uh, obviously, you got situations where you know if 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 I've got to paint this room, okay. Um, I can't, and, and you know, it takes one person to paint the room, uh, you know, it takes them uh, two hours to paint it, but then um, it takes 48 hours for the paint to dry. I could accelerate the painting of the room by putting more people on it, but I can't make the paint dry any faster. So, so you know, I, I try to look at those things uh, and, and figure out which ones I can, would help with more people or, or working. Uh, longer hours uh, to get it done and which ones can't. And so once I got that done and I think I've got a pretty good idea of which ones we can meet, which ones we can't, if, if there are any that, that looks like we, we're not going to be able to meet the deadline, uh, what I'll do is I'll contact the owner of those, uh, of the people that are setting the requirement and ask them how hard is that requirement. Because lots of times people, you know, they'll They'll need it in two weeks, and they'll tell you they need it in a week because they know, you know, it might be late. So, uh, you know, contact those people and say, hey, you know, um, it looks like we're going to have a problem meeting your requirement. How hard is that? Is that deadline? Mm -hmm. um, and and if it's not, you know, try to negotiate, or, or or if you can't, tell them that you know, hey, it looks like right now, I can get the room painted in an hour, but. You know, it's still going to be two, you know, two days for the paint to dry before you can use it, and, and there's just nothing I can do about that. So, so try to manage the customer's expectations uh, so that they know that, hey, there's a possibility that I'm not going to be able to meet your deadline, and here's why. You know, explain it to them so that they understand. Um, so, so once I've done all that, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my manager and I'm going to say, hey. Um, here's the situation we've got. We've got all these requirements due. I've identified which ones I think we can meet. If you give me a couple extra people, I can meet this one also. But these two, you know, we're going to have problems with. I've contacted the person uh, and told them that it might be late. One of them was okay with that. One of them's really upset, you know. Um, so the management knows and, and they can help and intercede and say, you know, ask them for their help and say, hey, can you call that one customer that's upset? Or you know, or you know, do you have a suggestion on how we can meet that requirement uh, so that they're not upset? Okay. So turn it over to management and, and let them uh, help prioritize uh, the list from there. So uh, that's that's kind of how I handle uh, situations like that where we have uh, multiple deadlines and, and we may or may not be able to meet them. Okay, so I was right at four minutes. Okay. Um, so, the, one of the reasons that, that um, I was probably, or some of the things that I did um, in this was, um, and, and this is what we call a technical question, there's also behavioral questions. Behavioral questions are like, what's your greatest strength or what's your greatest weakness or, uh, you know, tell us about a time that you and the boss didn't agree and how did you handle that. Those are behavioral questions. This is, this is little maybe just a little bit of that but it's mostly a technical question in other words how do you perform work and so what you want to do with that is you want to think about the things that the boss is going to want to know okay about hiring you as an employee okay how does this person handle that well 
and, and so we've got a list here of, of things that you can do to kind of demonstrate that, that you have a method to, to doing or, or, or tackling this particular question. So you identify the <coughs> excuse me. So you identify the complexity of the task. You identify which ones have long lead times, like the paint drying. Um, you you identify which ones you can't control because it has. We have to send this out to a printer, and they have to print it. And once they're done, then we can deliver it to the customer, or whatever the case may be. Um, and, and and some of those steps that you might do intuitively, right? And you don't necessarily think about, uh, but you do them intuitively might differ depending on what your actual job is. So, so you know, you can kind of tailor those steps. But again, you want to, you want to kind of, you want to kind of demonstrate this, not just one step of uh, like, oh, I prioritize those. Well, yeah, you prioritize those, but you probably looked, before you did that, you looked and said, oh, which ones of these are easy? Mm -hmm. Which ones of these can I get knocked out this afternoon? Uh, you know, how can I whittle this list down, or, or, or which ones are going to be complex because I got to send it off to somebody else? Uh, you kind of do that without thinking about it too much. But in an interview, you, you kind of want to demonstrate that you you actually think about all those things. So uh, that's what that first set of of, of list is. Um, you know, demonstrate that you you think about okay, well, how do I solve it? Maybe I can solve it by additional work hours or additional people, right? So now you're demonstrating, you know, you you don't just go, oh, we got a bunch of stuff to do, I don't know what to do. You think about it and, and you come up with solutions. So um, uh, part of that is, you know, contact the owner, see how uh, firm their deadlines are, prioritize the task, and then and then once you've, once you've kind of done your homework, then, then um, you know, for, for non-management type positions, you know, you're wanting to demonstrate your technical skill, which is why they're going to be asking you a technical question. So, so at that point, you also want to talk about, okay, I'm going to go talk to the boss. Because as a boss, they're looking to hire you. They want to know, okay, well, if this person's having problems, they're going to let me know about it, and I'm not going to find out because they, they missed a deadline, and now that person's calling me going, why did you miss my deadline, and I didn't even know about it. So. So, so you want to you want to give an answer that that demonstrates to the boss that you're going to be a good employee and, and communicate to them what the problem is. So so that's why you want to say, okay, I'm going to go get input from the boss as far as how do I prioritize these, right? Um, even though you may already have a list and suggestions saying, hey, you know, we got these ten things, like seven of them we can do, three of them we got these problems with. Um, so, so we can prioritize which ones can and can't be completed. Um, and then I got inform and seek management approval for overtime, you know, assignments or additional resources. That's kind of, uh, uh, you know, a given. Uh, but uh, um, ask management if they can help with getting some of those deadlines extended maybe on the ones that you can't meet. Um, and then, of course, communicate to the task owners and manage expectations. Again, that's something that is like, okay, well, you know, if they're able to do that, that's one less thing I have to do as a manager, right? So if, if I hire Jessica and she's not able to meet, you know, a, a deadline, you know, she just told me, oh, yeah, she calls and lets them know and explains things and, and you know, maybe that's something I don't need to do then, but on the the three that she couldn't do and the one got upset, she's gonna to come to me and then I'm gonna I'm gonna help with that one. Right? Um, so 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 you always want to make sure you're you're letting uh, the manager know that you're gonna communicate with them. Because you know this this question had nothing to do with the communication skills, but you always want to highlight your communication skills because that's that's something that's really important, right? Uh, so no matter what the question is it doesn't it doesn't hurt to always Kind of include that in the, in the mix. Um, so again, a lot of these questions, um, the the answer is it is is baked into the question, but it's not really the question. They ask you a question, 
um, and what they're really wanting to know is other stuff. So in this question, um, you know, how do you handle some requirements? What they want to know is, you know, do you have a method for analyzing your work processes and identifying issues and then coming up with solutions for those issues? That's really the question, right? Um, so, so that's what these things are kind of designed to do is help you answer that question and tell that story. So uh, the other thing I talked about, I use the pain analysis, right? If, <coughs> if you've got a, something specific, especially if it's something specific to the job, okay? I just kind of gave a generic answer. If I was working facilities and talking about pay, that would be a really good example to use. But uh, you want to try to include examples because uh, it paints a story, it, it paints a picture for the person as far as how you do things. Mm -hmm. And it also helps them remember you, okay? If, if the board is sitting around later and they've got a bunch of people and, and they all kind of are all in that same kind of area of, you know, scoring the same and trying to decide who they're going to pick, if they'd be like, oh, I really like that story about the pain, right? They'll, they'll remember the stories you tell before they'll remember your name. Okay, so if you can come up with a good story to include, um, you know, do that, a good example. Um, so, so examples are, are always good. And what you want to do if you use an example is you want to use the, uh, the CCAR method or uh, there's also something called STARS. And, and I think STAR just situational something action results. CCAR is the one I, I usually go with because that's what's at the OPM website. CCAR is uh, where you you give the context, you give the challenge, you give the action, and you give the results. So so you say, okay, here's the situation, and you explain the situation or the context. You state the challenge. The, 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 so, so the situation was we needed to, to get a room ready for the Admiral's meeting, okay? The challenge was we had a limited time frame and we needed to paint and the paint had to dry. And so the action was um, we you know, uh, figured out that uh, we weren't going to be able to meet the deadline but we got some fans and some heaters to put in the room and we were able to get the paint to dry faster. And the result was we got the room ready for the Admiral's big meeting and he was happy. So, so, so the CCAR, uh, and you can use that for any story. Uh, don't do an interview and talk about painting the admiral's roof because I'll know right away <laughs> yeah. where you got that from. Um, but um, that's what you want to do with examples is talk about here's here's the situation, here's why it was a, a challenge and, and it was important, here's what I did and here was the, the result and, and hopefully the result's a positive result, right? Um, you know, you don't want to say and we couldn't get painted and the general got paint all over the uniform. No, <laughs> you don't want to do that. Um, all right, so, so I, I've, I've got some uh, do's and don'ts here. So do highlight your communication skills. Um, you know, so you can say something like, I explained to the customer what the steps were and, and the timeline that was required so they understood. You don't want to appear authoritative, uh, authoritarian. In other words, well, you know, I just have to tell somebody that it can't be none, right? <laughs> you, you, you always want to because you want to hire employees that are going to be consensus builders and team, good team players and stuff, not somebody who's just going to say, well, I just tell them it can't be done. Somebody's not getting their stuff. Uh, don't say that. And that kind of seems like a no-brainer, yeah, but yeah. people will do it, I'm yeah. telling you. Um, so do highlight your willingness to seek higher level help. Uh, again, especially at, at the lower levels, uh, you know, you want to make sure your the person hiring, the hiring official knows that you're going to be a good communicator and come to them for help because that's what they want you to do. Uh, so, so you, you might say, you know, I'd let my boss know that we had a conflict and that I, I, I'll investigate it and I'll let you know what the result is, but let them know early that, hey, it looks like there's going to be an issue. Um, don't indicate that you would delay informing them. Uh, say, well, you know, I couldn't figure it out and if, if we you know, couldn't make the deadline, then I would tell the boss. That's not a good, yeah, you don't want to communicate that message to the hiring panel that, you know, well, if I couldn't figure it out and, it, and we, we were going to miss the deadline, yeah. I'd tell you. Okay. Well, that sounds like it's a good answer, but really it's not because you yeah. just told them that you're waiting. Yeah. 
yeah. right? Yeah. Until you already, yes. until it's already broke to yeah. tell them. Okay, that's what they're going to hear. Yeah. Um, even, even though, like I said, it kind of sounds like a good answer. Uh, probably not. Um, do indicate that you'd provide the boss with suggestions. So again, say, you know, hey, you know, I, I think maybe if we did this, we did that. Um, you know, we might be able to get by without creating, you know, having too many people mad at us. You know. um, uh, do not indicate that you're you're not interested in sorting it out. Or, you know, well, if, if we had a bunch of priorities, I could figure it out. I'd just tell the boss to let him figure it out because you know that's what they get paid for. Um, that, again, <laughs> that may be true, but um, that that's not the message that you want to. Because they're looking to hire the person that's going to be the best employee, mm -hmm. right? Uh, in other words, who's who's going to make their life the easiest, yeah. right? Uh, and and so you don't want to say, well, you know, I I take it to my boss and let him figure it out, yeah. right? Well, well, not the answer. Mm -hmm. So, at any rate, uh, so that's all the notes I had. Did you guys have questions or? Not at all. This is a whole lot of good information. So <clears throat> I can tell you're very good at interviews. It seems like. You the man when it comes to this stuff right here. Well, so, I, I, I do have a, it, it, it just baffles me, honestly, that it took for you to come, no no disrespect, but you to come and be brand new to input something like this that we, I feel like we should have had for a long time. It's, it kind of baffles me that. Well, the, just, that's why I do it, is because yeah. I've, I've, throughout my whole career, I've been like, why don't people you know, get their get their people ready for interviews and stuff because I, I will tell you, <coughs> a, a lot of people don't practice. And, and and what I will tell you is that um, you know, take some of these interview questions and answer them to your mom, your your significant other, your dog, you know, uh, the dishwasher, whatever will listen to you, and, and time yourself and practice and say, okay. I'm going to tell this story. I want I'm, I want to shoot for a two two and a half minute answer, okay? And and do that. And if your if your answer is short, then you're shorting yourself on the opportunity to tell that hiring official great things about you, okay? Also, when you get done, say, did I include an example? Did I paint a picture that they will that that they will remember? Okay? Because that's a lot of times people get hired just because they painted the best picture, okay? Because otherwise, they can hire you off your resume, mm -hmm. right? That's true. The stuff you did is on your resume. Yeah. Okay. The interview is your opportunity to paint a picture. Okay. And and let them know that not only is this the stuff I did, this is how awesome I am at doing it. Yeah. All right. That that's what the interview is for. Okay. Is to tip that scale because everybody everybody that they're interviewing was good enough to hire. Mm -hmm. Right. The interview is your, your opportunity to paint that picture and make, make yourself memorable. Especially if they don't know you. If they do know you, it's a little bit easier to kind of go, okay, well, they kind of got a picture. But, but um, there, there's always going to be panel members, theoretically, that don't know you or don't know you well. So the better picture you paint, the better they're going to remember. Um, yeah. Um, so, so your point, uh, uh, about uh, people not doing this. I don't know why that is. I, I think everybody is like, this is secret squirrel stuff and they, yeah. you know, you can't tell them. As far as I know, there's nothing that says you can't tell people, hey, these are the questions and here's how you answer. But but I, I had the problem where when I first started interviewing, um, th th I would get asked questions and I would give what I thought was a great answer, right? Mm -hmm. um, like, like once they, they asked me, uh, What's your greatest uh, weakness? And I did the whole thing about, well, you know, I'm kind of you know attentive. I like to make sure everything's a certain way. But actually, that's a strength because it means I make documents that don't have any mistakes in them and this and that. But it can slow me down, so that's why I, I count it as a weakness. Is because it can take me a little longer to do things. But when I do it, it's right. Right. And so I tried to make my strength into a weak, you know, my weakness into what was really kind of a strength. And I thought it was a great answer. Um, and I got feedback later, and they're like, "Yeah, well, yeah, it was really a, it was a pretty good answer, but it wasn't what we were looking for." And I'm like, "What?" And they're like, "Yeah, for that for that question, we want to know that you've done a self-assessment, 
you've identified your weakness, and we've already done this one. If you want, you can watch the video. It gives you all the clues of it. Uh, but uh, that you've done a self-assessment, you've identified your weakness, and you've come up with a way to mitigate it. Mm -hmm. What your weakness is is not important. They want to hear those three things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you say, well, um, I'm, a, I'm not a morning person, right? That's my weakness. Um, or or, or, or um, your, your self-assessment would be, you know, I, I know uh, from personal experience that I'm just not a morning person. Or if you've done a Briggs-Meyer or, or one of those personality things, mm -hmm. those are always good to reference. But um, and, and so then your weakness is I'm not a morning person and my mitigation is uh, I've moved my workout routine to in the morning so that that way when I get to work I'm already awake, I get a lot more done, I'm a lot more pr productive and uh, when I go home with the day I feel much better because I don't have to worry about all the stuff I didn't get done at work. Uh, it's, just, it's just really helping. So, so that's what they want to hear. It doesn't matter what the weakness is, yeah, right? right? It's that you've done a self-assessment, identified your weakness, and you've come up with a way to overcome it. That's some great information. Right? Yeah. Nobody yeah. tells that's you. That. So, so if you do a lot of interviews and you go get feedback, eventually they'll tell you what all the answers are. Okay? You just got to figure them out. Yeah. Right? Um, so, so, so I would definitely recommend if you do an interview, talk to the panel members after they won't give you feedback until after the, the thing is announced or whatever. To do that? What? Talk give you to them afterwards? After it's then announced, the position's oh, announced. After it's announced. Okay. Then go back and say, hey, I didn't get selected. You know, can you okay. give me feedback on, on the interview or so resume or whatever? Okay. So yeah, absolutely. Um, that's how I learned what all the right answers were. Okay, because <laughs> like I said, I thought I was giving great great answers. But it wasn't what it wasn't what was on the score sheet and how they were scored. Okay, so so the way you do that is you is number one interview for lots of jobs as many as you can. It, and I know a lot of people aren't looking to move. I I've moved all over the place. Yeah. Okay, so I've done a lot of interviews because I may do an interview for New Mexico one day and Georgia the next and Tennessee. Uh -huh. You know, um, I I did three interviews in one week. Okay. Wow. Um, so, so if if you decided, hey, it's time for me to go on to the next step, you need to apply for every job that you're qualified for with your resume. If your resume <coughs> isn't getting referred at least 25 to 35 percent, you need to get somebody to look at your resume because it's not it's not hidden enough. Out of those, out of the ones that you get referred for, you know, you want to probably be getting an interview at least 10 percent of the time. Right? If you get an interview for some place in Alaska, do the phone interview. Okay? If they offer you the job, well, then you can decide if you want to go to Alaska, but you can say, no, I've, I've decided to pursue other opportunities. That may be, I just don't want the job, right? Uh, so, so you can tactfully say, you know, hey, I'm sorry, I, I'm not able to accept it this time. But then that lets you know you did well on the interview. Okay? If, if you if you don't get job, the job, that's okay because the purpose of, of applying for them and interviewing for them is to get comfortable with the interview. And, and the, the analogy I always use for people is like, you don't go play in the World Series and decide, oh, I'll, I'll learn how to hit a ball when I get there, mm. right? You practice in the batting cages or, or you know whatever. You practice hitting that baseball with that bat before mm -hmm you show up at the World Series, it's like, okay, now I'm on stage, I gotta hit it for real. If I don't hit it home run, I don't get I don't get the job. Yeah. Right? You need to get in the batting cages and practice before it's time to hit one out of the park so that you get hired. Okay? So so that's why I say do uh, do job interviews, do telephone interviews. And and in, unless somebody tells you you can't, record yourself during the telephone interview. Okay. Watch it later, and then that way you can go, oh, uh -huh. this is what I did wrong, right? Um, because then when the one job that you really want does come open, you're ready for it. Uh -huh. you, you've hit some balls in the batting cages, and now you're ready to say, throw me the pitch, because I'm going to hit it. Right? Yeah. That's some great information. So, do you think um, people that conduct 
phone interviews versus in-person interviews are at a disadvantage versus um, the in-person <coughs> interviewing? Um, I don't think so, but the the problem that you've got is it depends on the interview panel, right? So <coughs> the other part of that is you could you could in a, you could give the exact same interview to three different panels. One of them's going to love you, one of them's going to hate you, and one of them's going to be like me, right? I mean that's just life, okay? So some people may not like phone interviews. Some of the hiring officials may not like them. Some of them may like them. Um, the last boss I worked for, uh, two of the last three jobs that he'd hired for had all done telephone interviews. So whether that means they got the interview even though they were somewhere else because they were a little more qualified or something, uh, or they just were more comfortable sitting at home in their underwear on the phone, or they just came across you know, better or something, who knows? Now, now, a lot of people will tell you, if you're doing a phone interview, dress up, put on the suit and tie, put on the, the business dress, you know, whatever, and, and act like you're there in person because then that comes across in the phone. I can tell when some, if I'm doing a phone interview, I can tell when somebody's smiling while they're talking. You can just, I mean, you can tell, right? I mean, you talk to family and friends, you can tell whether or not they're, they're smiling when they're talking to you or not. You can, you can hear that through the phone. So, so maybe some people are a little bit more comfortable not sitting in front of a panel and then that comes across on the phone that, hey, this person was comfortable, relaxed, confident, just because they weren't so nervous because they were sitting there and got, you know, they got six eyeballs looking at them waiting for them to do something, you know, wrong. Uh, and then write a note about it, right? So, so there's, there's a little bit of that too. So I, I don't think it's a disadvantage. I think of anything that's an advantage. At any rate, um, I went a few minutes over, but I, I always try to keep it right at 30 minutes so that we can respect your time.